guys, welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Co Plune with us, and he can say his name and what he does. Hello, I am Co, and I play guitar and keyboard. Keyboards in awesome. Plune. Uh, since hopefully to be doing like backing vocals and some electronic sample stuff as well. Awesome. So my first name, Carl. First question, Carl. Um, how did you come up with the name Co Plune? Because that I, I we've been friends for a little bit, but that was one question that has been on my mind for a little bit. How, like, does it mean anything? Like, what, can you just give me a little bit of backstory behind that? Yeah, um, our first drummer in the band was really, really into Star Wars, and it came from that, and um, more or less every other interview we've tried to make up an imaginary thing that it wasn't. So <laughs> <laughs> our, um, our new singer, has uh, she said it's the sound a dolphin makes when it lands in the water, which is not true. <laughs> so we just try and lie about it every time. You have to come up with a new one each time you guys play or each time you do an interview so that somebody will eventually just come up with like a list of, of the things that people think that it, it is, but it's actually not. So. Yeah, but generally it just means nothing, really. It just sounded cool. <laughs> it's mysterious enough for us to get away with having a band name and didn't mean anything at all. There you go, there you go. Well, the secret has been revealed. But my next question, Carl, uh, how did you form Chloe Plune and just how did you get your members? Um, it started with me and Alex, the first drummer. And um, I just had the first song. Well, I had most of the EP when we first started the band. And um, we all... Like, I met everyone at uni, and um, I just said to Alex, oh, should we just mess around with these riffs? And then we pretty much wrote that whole song, and then Jack was just sat in the room, was like, do you want to play bass? And then Courtney, more or less, she filmed us um, doing, like, a promo video, and then she just joined, like, a week later because we needed a vocalist. So it all just more or less happened in the space of, like, two weeks, really. Nice. And I, I definitely feel like a lot of, like, when I have bands on, like, especially at universities, like, they they always they, they always like wind up forming like through college or something like that like did you know that they were playing instruments prior to like you guys meeting like hanging out and being friends or was it just kind of like everything just happened and it just like just formed like that yeah it pretty much just all formed like as it happened really because i wrote most of the songs myself and i could just never find people to play it or people that either cared enough about it or even liked the stuff um, but yeah, they just well, just happened to be in the room, happened to like the stuff, and then it just kind of wasn't really even meant to be a band. It was just kind of like just meant to be an EP between friends because I was I was going to leave university and go to somewhere else to study, and I was like, oh, we'll just make this, and then it just became a band, and people liked it. It was like, oh, we'll just carry on, I guess. Awesome. So my next question, Carl, uh, what are some favorite venues that you'd like to go see shows at? Um, at the moment, probably the place I go to see shows most is Southampton, because that's where I live, but um, there's like tons of venues, like there's the Joiners here, which is like probably the most like independent one, I'd suppose. and then there's the Talking Heads as well, and the Alex, but there's places like places in London, like I'd like to probably go to like the old Blue Last, it's like there's like DIY bands that play there, or probably the Hope and Ruin in Brighton, or the Wave Maiden in Portsmouth. It's just like a really nice place, and like all those places around by really, really like cool promoters that help out bands. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, kind of a follow up to venues. What has been the last show that you went to? Ooh, the last show that I went to is probably to see Courtney's band, who used to be the singer in Complain, which is uh, she's in a band now called Juno, which is like uh, it's like Bombay Bicycle Club. It's really, really poppy and it's really, really fun. So, but when you're in a band, it's kind of like the only show sometimes you go to, like the it's one job. <laughs> <laughs> it is really bad. It's just like having two jobs and like running in the site as well. That like I interview bands as well. It's just finding time is really hard. So, hopefully, going to go to a show on the 25th as well. So that should be something to look forward to. Awesome, awesome. So my next question, Carl, what are some of your musical influences? Um, it ranges from like classical to jazz to some really, really heavy stuff that people probably wouldn't think I'm into, like the Ender Escape Plan and stuff like that. Or I'm really into um, the guy who writes all the music for Final Fantasy soundtracks. Oh, nice. Yeah. I can't, I won't say his name because I won't be able to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sound like an absolute idiot. But um, 
Yeah, there's that, and then there's bands like The Fall of Troy, At The Drive-In, Mars Volta, Dredge, um, and then some popular stuff, like Bombay Bicycle Club, or just really simple music. Like, when you play jazz and, and like, technical music, I find, like, listening to that kind of music is really... I just get sick of it, so I just want to listen to simple things. Things that have less guitar. I'm trying to stay as far away as I can from, like, thinking about playing guitar as I can. And, like, not taking a guitarist approach to writing music. So bands like Churches have been, like, a big influence of stuff I've done, really, at the moment. Yeah, and I definitely feel like... And, you know, I can definitely translate that into, like, interviewing bands and things of that nature. Because for me, it's like, okay... You know, I interview bands anywhere from, like, hardcore music to, like, you know, like, pop punk, like, pop music. And <clears throat> I think it's a good way to kind of, like, you know, not just have so much of one thing. Because, you know, like, the, the saying is, is, like, too much of one thing isn't, you know, isn't always good. So, um, I think that that obviously reflects a lot in your music. And when you were mentioning, like, heavier bands like Dillinger and uh, things of that nature, I was, like... You know, I wasn't expecting that because I know, like, I've listened to your stuff and I'm like, yeah, I would have definitely not picked, that wouldn't have been, like, the first band on my list of bands. I'm like, okay, that's definitely something that I associate with, you know, Coplune. So, I think that, I, I think that it, that ultimately makes a better artist, too, is that if you, if you can listen to anything from, like, that sort of heavier style music to, like, you know, Bombay Bicycle Club, I think that that like definitely reflects in the music that you're playing and you know i think it keeps it interesting like the guitar thing i definitely agree with that because i also play guitar for those that don't know um but i think that you know it makes it makes you think about things in a different way or come at something at a different perspective so i totally agree with you on that carl yeah like i try and listen to as much as everything as i can even if i don't like it because i'm like Maybe there's something I could like about this, and maybe I should try and listen to it. And if I really can't get into it, I'm just going, maybe that's not for me. Like, I really don't understand things like blues. I don't really know how to play it. I don't know anything about it. And I've tried playing it, but it just doesn't really connect with me. There's bands that do sort of, like, do it well. Like, um, White Denim I'm a massive fan of, but I have no idea how to approach that kind of music yet. So, um I think, like, if you're, if you're in a band or you're an artist, you should just try and listen to it as much as you can because you never know what you might like. And, um, and if you don't like something, that's completely fine. So there's probably bands that, like, I really like that people would just think are, like, absolutely awful. <laughs> it's, I think it's, like, an honesty thing, you know what I mean? Like, if you... It, I think, like, if you honestly listen to it, you honestly approach it, and you're like, okay, there's something about this band that I don't like, but, you know, maybe there's aspects of that artist that I could take it kind of mix it into what I do. And, uh... I also feel like there's just some that just don't that I'm just like okay I just don't like I could I can flat out say that I don't like and you know people can take that opinion and turn it however they like to but I think at the end of the day like if you're honest with it and you're and you like that band then I, I think that that is always a good thing and you know that's why a lot of people have some guilty pleasures which you know is also good too because there's some bands that I like that I'm sure a lot of other people don't like as well so you know, I definitely feel, I feel like you shouldn't be kind of a martyr for music, you know what I mean? Like, everybody likes different things, and you kind of should respect what they like and what they don't like, so, you know, that's that's the beauty of music, is that it's not uh, specific to one person or, like, one thing, so. Yeah, I mean, like, you, your mind can always be changed by, like, what you see live, like, I've listened to bands before, and I've been like, this really isn't my thing, and I've seen it live, and then I'm like, oh, that makes much more sense now. So I think it's always good to approach music with an open mind. Like, whenever I go and see bands or I ever play shows, I always, like, try and watch every band, because I'm like, I may not like this, but I may actually watch it and be like, oh, this is actually really good. So I think you just have to try. And I think a lot of musicians nowadays really kind of are like, so, like, I don't know, like, music seems like there's so many trends now that people try and follow, and like, oh, you can't like this and that, and so, <laughs> But you can, and there's like no big deal about it, really. I think people like to make a fuss out of it for for no reason. You know, it's again like there's some bands that are just you know carving paths out of the music industry just because they choose to not do the same thing. And I think those are bands that I personally like going after because it's like okay, 
So they're doing something that's different. And I, I've, I've said it multiple times on like interviews I've done. I feel like the UK scene has always got something different, something like exciting. And then like, you know, America comes along and then like there'll be like six other bands that sound just like this one band from the UK. And I'll be like, well, they did this like two years ago or something like that. And I'm like, now they're on to something totally different. So I think that like, I feel like there's a common misconception with like artists and just like people in general that like music is that you know like you're pigeonholed to like something or be or like some sort of trend when in reality like people should be like okay this is different like there are some stuff that I will say that are just kind of like out of bounds and just like wild but you know I appreciate their approach and just aspect to doing something different that isn't kind of like I guess cookie cutter ish in the sense that it's like, okay, I'm just following what, like, the next person down the line is doing, as opposed to, like, being like, okay, I'm just gonna follow my own, like, musical compass and do something that's, like, something totally different from somebody else, you know? Yeah. But, uh, anyway, Carl, my next question is to kind of follow up influences. Who have you been listening to recently? I've been listening to, um, there's a mashup album called Wugazi 13 songs, or 13, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a combination of uh, Fugazi and Wu-Tang songs, and they're all oh, like nice. mixed. Okay. It's, that's really awesome. And um, it's just, um, like, I like things like that, because, um, like, I'm not really, like, I'm a guitar player, but, like, I don't really think of guitar as, like, a bit of a song, I just think, well, I do, I kind of think, like, if it's just a part in a song, it doesn't need to be massively technical, and, like, those songs are just really clever. I like really think about music like in terms of like the whole composition and think if it sounds really good together then that's like a great thing it's great when you see a band or you hear an artist where like all the elements make like a great song so there's been that i've been listening a lot to i'm always listening to churches now because there's just there's no guitars in it it's all synths um there's another band that i've been checking out called ruby throated okay as well. they um they're like really weird like a weird pop but like a lot of like i've like fully embraced like I like pop music a lot more than I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, because it's just not so technical. It's more about, like, textures, layers, and production and stuff like that. So, say, I'm always listening to Dredge. That's always one band that I cannot really stop listening to. Um, what else? Bands like Little Tyvee. Um, who else? Um, like, a lot of things like really good rhythm and really good feel. So I'm really into Wolfpack at the moment. But I'm really, really, for some reason, I'm really into Mute Math. You ever heard of them? Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they're such a good band. They make the most, um, probably the most, like, futuristic pop. It's like, whatever they do is just so cutting edge and modern. And they're always, like, leagues ahead. So I'm always, like, listening to that band to try and see if I can get any cool ideas, really. Yeah, they're very, like, I, I, I mean, like, I feel like they draw a lot of influence from like math rock too, like in that sort of genre of music too. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm like the biggest mute math fan on the face of the earth because I'm sure there are plenty of other people. Um, but I do enjoy their stuff, and I think that I all would also agree that they are all like just they're always coming with something like original, something interesting, and uh, they just got something special going on. Like I, I saw this, um, it was a while back, but they did. A um, they did like a like a collab album with uh, Twenty One Pilots, uh, and they just they were in a room together and they were just like kind of mashing up like a mute math song with like a Twenty One Pilots song, and it was just cool to see like the process of them being like in a space, everything set up obviously like in a studio, but they're like playing in the same room and kind of like feeding off each other's energy, uh, and if for if you haven't seen it carl or for other people who are watching this like i would definitely go check it out because i think it's that a lot of bands don't do that and so for me just as somebody who is like a lover of music i think that that that's really cool is when you can put two bands in a room and kind of like mat like mash out and kind of like make stuff that's interesting that obviously like two completely different fan bases like will come together and kind of be like oh this is cool I'm sure there's people that don't like it, but I think I'm in the majority of people that definitely enjoy it. So I don't know if you check that out, Carl, or not. I haven't yet, but I keep seeing the video for it because um, I'm like, I should check that out after you recommended it now because it sounds really cool. But um, they're like completely two different bands. And I think it's always good when you like get people who aren't similar bands working together. Like 
it's like whenever I go and see a lineup of bands now, I don't like all the bands to be the same. And like I know promoters may like that, or some not everyone likes that, but I guess it's an easier show and pull people to. But it's nice when you go see a band and there's like four or five different bands that are completely different. I bring like loads of people together that would never ever like go and play shows together, or their fans would never go to the same shows. It's cool when that happens. I think it's underrated for sure. I don't know. I I, I don't know how it is in the UK. I know for us, like it's in the like US. I think for me, I would say it's fairly like underrated there have been some tours that i've seen that like have similar sort of bands like play like the the mo one of the more recent tours that i've seen i think last year yeah it was last year i saw um it was like hail the sun was headlining with like capsize and then um idola and then limbs so capsize and limbs were kind of like the heavier to like post hardcore kind of stuff and then like Idola and like Hail the Sun are like more that experimental side of like post hardcore. I mean, obviously, similar sort of genre, but like completely different approaches to the music. So for me, that I enjoy that. I love mixed genre shows. Like I think is really cool because like there's some bands like you were saying. Like if you go to a show and there's like you know a band that you know on the tour or on the you know that show for that night, and then there's like three other bands that you don't know and they're like totally different. I think that that's cool because it's for me it's like okay like I would have never gone to go see them maybe at another show but now like now that they're at this show I'm going to watch them and see how they play and then you know maybe if they if I like it enough like I'll be like okay I'll go check them out at like a show that has bands that are similar to them like on a tour. Yeah there's just so much music out there nowadays like you can't really like I always hate it when like you go to like like I've been to gigs before, and people are like, "Oh, and you got to see one band," and it's like, try and see the other ones because you, you just might find something you like. And, yeah, uh, you you just never know. You just never know. So, I would totally agree with that, Carl. But my next question is, we're getting into the fun question. If you could pick a song to cover, what song would it be? I've always wanted to cover FCP Remix, just because it's just such a classic. But me and my friend were talking about this, and we were thinking about. With my other band, Sunspot, I said to him, "Wouldn't it be cool, like, if we could cover all of Relationship of Relationship of Command by the Drive-In, like, oh, nice. do it yeah. from beginning to end?" Because, like, I know a lot of bands do that. Like, I think Circus Survive did like a Nirvana show, and um, there was like a band in the UK that covered all brand new songs. But um, I'm thinking I'd like to do that, like, cover like a whole entire album. Like, probably I doubt anyone would watch, but I'd have fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most important thing, Carl, is that if you had fun, then that's that's all I'm going to say. But that would be really cool. I think that I also feel like that is, like, heavily underrated in terms of, like, artists doing that. Because like, you'll see them do, like, a cover song or, you know, you'll see, like, those compilation albums with, like, a bunch of different bands doing cover songs. But I think it's very, I would say it's very in a minority of, like, seeing a band covering, like, a whole album's worth of that particular band so i would i personally would love to see it i I think other people would enjoy seeing it as well especially like i had to drive and fan and i always like hearing like different approaches for like from a different artist like if it's a completely different i wouldn't say a completely different genre but like just a different approach to that sort of song and uh i i watch a lot of the um it's on triple j uh in australia i keep forgetting the name of like what the um what the series is but basically they'll have like a pop artist or they'll have like a mainstream artist s- song like i don't know they did some band did a um childish gambino i think it was like 3005 and they redid it and they were like a completely different band that like kind of remixed his track and like made it their own and i i personally love seeing that sort of stuff i know like uh, BBC One Radio does that too with uh, the most recent one that I saw was uh, Paramore did like Drake's Passion Fruit so I enjoy that I enjoy that aspect too of like you know if you can create if you can create a song that you know kind of invokes the same feelings of the old song but also like adds kind of new elements to that newer track I think that that's like a win in my opinion but you know I think it's cool when bands do that. Like, I'm not 
a big fan of like people who cover songs and then just cover it exactly. I think that's really is is if it's that's what you want and that's fine. But like, I always think it's cool when like you hear something new. Like whenever I play like shows and stuff like that, I complain like we never write set lists and we just decide on the night. And um, I don't know from the fall of Troy really, like because they they never did that. They never had any set list. They just more or less just went up on stage and played. <laughs> and then, like, there's a lot of, like I'm like. I think it's best like when you go see a band that they don't play the same show they did last night or there's parts of improvisation or there's bits that are different or there might be a solo just chucked in somewhere but I think like it's cool when bands cover cover of people's songs and they just completely change it because I think why would you want to listen to someone else singing the same song giving you exactly the same experience like let's do something completely different with it and um, change it up like if I was going to cover a song, I'd take something that's like really, really heavy, like I don't know, something like something completely that people would never think I'd do. Like take a Slayer song, just take the lyrics, and then just see what else we could do with it, or like something by a band called Botch, or something like um, the Exotic Animal Petting Zoo, or something like that. Just something that's completely left field. Just take the lyrics and go like, "I'm cover this song because uh, it's completely different. We'd never do anything like that, so just try it." Yeah, it's like I think it's like a it's like a change up, you know. I think that like you said I, and I personally don't like seeing is when I see a band like and they'll cover something and it'll cover like pretty much note for note the same thing I was just like well I could just listen to the original if, if I really wanted to listen to it you know I want to hear your perspective on the song like obviously you know if it's something that means a lot to you then you should change it and you should make it your own and you know obviously don't take away the the aspects of the songs that you like but I think it's good to have that sort of creative presence when you're creating when you're you know creating a cover. It's the same thing as if you would take you know any sort of liberties when you're writing original music. Like you wouldn't want to just like make it as basic as possible. You want to try to make it like lively. You want to try to add like layers. You want to try to make it interesting to the point where it's not like okay, you know, there's just kind of one line of melody, but you know I can kind of expand upon it or do something different with it. I think that that reflects the best uh, just from a listener's perspective and somebody who, you know, listens to a lot of music. I think that that is the best possible avenue for sure. But uh, next question, Carl, is another fun one. Of course, I got to ask this favorite food to eat. Oh, um, mine are probably really boring because um, I just have an avid avid love like massive love for baked beans <laughs> <laughs> it's really sad. like i just have beans on toast like that's probably like my favorite go-to meal just beans on toast a little bit of cheese some some eggs like i like some like interesting food but just nothing beats that and just cereal like basic basic food just beans on toast like even for like roast dinner so th do you have ro roast dinners in the u.s i don't know if you call it something else no like, i know what you're talking about because i i'm i cook so i know i know a lot about that but no we don't unfortunately it's just like gravy and chicken and <laughs> but because i don't like gravy so i have baked beans and like i got criticized by like three s for like uni <laughs> Have baked beans on toast. Have it on roast dinners, on pizza with chips, um, potato wedges. So, baked beans, beans on toast. If I can have that, I'm I'm happy. After this interview, guys, make sure to go send Carl some baked beans. I'm sure he'd love it. He'd love you if you send him some baked beans. I'm so happy, like re reduced salt and sugar, because <laughs> uh, I've got to be healthy with my beans. Beans are just great. They're so good for you and uh, just good. That was that was sponsored, uh, guys. We're gonna get a sponsor for Carl. He's gonna be sponsored by Baked Beans. Don't don't worry. Next time he comes on here, he's gonna have like a shirt just with like the Baked Bean logo on it. He's gonna be all decked out. Don't worry. We got we got Carl on the Baked Bean line. But anyway, next question: If there was somebody that you would like to collaborate with, who would it be? Oh, it'd have to be somebody who doesn't make the music that I kind of make and someone that I know would kind of push me to do different things because what I've learned really is like working on my own I will just make exactly what I will make and I will make nothing else that sounds like me and there's nothing wrong with that that's fine but um since like playing in my bands my other band Sunspot like I don't have to like 
I can sing a plane or write everything myself. Like sit in a room with a laptop, compose the whole song, and then send it to everyone. We learn it and we cut up what shit and then just kind of get on with it. But in Sunspot, I don't do any of that. Like I actually sit in a room with Will and write parts. And I've never really done that in a band. So I don't know. Have to be somebody really, really like diverse. Maybe like um, like Kings of Convenience or Simon and Garfunkel because I'd just be made to do something completely different. Or maybe like Melody Gardo, who's like a massive like jazz singer. So so somebody somebody like that really. So or who else could I make music with that I don't make anything like? Um, yeah, probably on the Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, I'd like to make music with them. But then again, I might end up doing the same thing because I could just easily, <laughs> I could easily fall back into jazz again. So um, I don't know. Uh, maybe Kimbra. Kimbra would be awesome. I reckon that'd be fun. Kimbra, yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, yeah. That would. Yeah. I, I I I love that. I love when like kind of like two different like entities come together and write something interesting. So I feel like the Kimbra thing would work out great. We'll just we'll just at Kimbra on Twitter. We'll make sure she knows about this. You know, future, future self. You know, we'll we'll get it going. But uh, anyway, next question, Carl. If there was another musical instrument that you would love to be proficient at, what would it be? Um, it would probably be. Most people won't think this, but I'd probably like to be able to write lyrics. Okay. That's, that's the only thing I really have struggled with, because um, I can write for mostly any instrument I want. So it would probably be lyrics, like be a lyricist and like be a really good singer or be a really, really good drummer. Okay. So if I could drum and play and sing as well, then then I just could just hire session musicians. It, like, <laughs> I'd have probably, such an easier life. Like I love my band and all, but like if I like <laughs> something solo, maybe. But if I could sing really well and write lyrics, then that would be great because I've got everything else. But I just have no idea. I've tried and it's awful. Like, uh, I feel like, and I I can't count how many times I've said this in inter- interviews either, but like, I feel like guitarists have this crutch where they can't do like hand and feet like coordination. Like I like anytime I get on a kit for drums, I can't do it. I just look like I like a deer in a headlight. I'll just be like, okay, this sounds good, and then like it just doesn't. It would my my friends will be like, this sounds terrible. You should never play drums ever again. I won't be able to erase that from my memories, you know, stuff like that. So I think personally, guitar players have a hard time playing drums. There might be a few in the general sort of thing, but I I personally struggle with drums. So I don't know, maybe in just speaking on myself, but I, I don't know how you feel about that as well, Carl. Um, I don't know, like I've always, like, I have a really like odd sense of rhythm. Like, I can write really rhythmic parts. Like, I think of guitar as sort of like a rhythmic piano. Yes. I think of it like drums and melody and bass at the same time, with everything sort of leading on counterparts. Apparently, I do a lot of that, and I have no idea how, because I've had no formal training. Like, I studied music at uni, but I didn't really learn much. It was a really bad course. It was kind of like, have you seen Whiplash? Yeah, I have, yeah. It was like that, like... <laughs> like constantly all the time and it made me really thick skinned but like I learned like the only thing I learned is like how to be professional and I didn't really learn much about playing I suppose but like I think rhythmically like I've got like I can write all the rhythmic parts kind of like compose them I'd love to be able to play them but um I think rhythm I've got it and I think if I really worked hard at drums I could I think it's like a case of learning and just kind of like sitting down and figuring out the the parts so like some what some people like I'm not rhythmically inclined. Like I am not a dancer. I can't do any of that. <laughs> you don't <laughs> I either. So yeah, I am not like a dancing man. And like everyone in my band is like, can you try and move more? And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not stepping away from my pedal board. It's like because accidents will happen. <laughs> that so. sounds sounds very much like me. It sounds a lot like me, Carl. So that's the, definitely we have something in ingredients in that. But uh. My next question is, in your opinion, who puts on a great live show? Oh, the last the last great live show I actually really saw was um was Andreas. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Really, that was a uh, that really made me think about like 
kind of how to approach music live, really. Because, uh, like, in terms of pedals, he just had a tube screamer and a tuner. And I was yeah. just like, that's amazing. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen anyone, like, nowadays everybody has huge pedal boards, and I'm, I'm guilty of it, but his live show was amazing. It was kind of like watching Michael Jackson, and that's probably, like, the coolest thing I've seen, really. Like, it was just... It was just fun, really, and you don't see that a lot now. You see so many people focusing on, like, oh, I've got to play my 718 times, <laughs> like, syncopated, syncopated, like, part correctly. And it's pretty much, like, that's a lot of it, and everybody looks really moody. And, like, Andreas is just, like, kind of reminded, like, you can have a lot of fun with it still. So, yeah, probably, probably Andreas, really. That was, like, the last, like, greatest live show I've ever seen, really. Nice, yeah. And that's, that's funny you mention him, because I'm actually seeing him next week because he's playing with Idola and Capstan in the States so I'll have to tell him you said what's going on but uh he I, I would also agree that he I saw him like in a small 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 venue in Atlantic City near my house or not near my house but like close um and yeah there was like he's such a great like live performer too I think like he's very like up front he's very like in people's not in people's faces not to be like rude but just like he's very like warm and inviting when he's like playing live and like you know it's just a great experience to watch them play and just kind of kill it i think it, it he's one of those bands that like again i'll keep back until like the day i die because i think that he's really got something going on that you know a lot of bands like you were mentioning kind of have that sort of like pose where they're just like i just have to stand up here right in front of my pedal board and just go like this and you know there are some bands that do that very well i mean there's some bands that are just out there that are technical like like for example i love seeing chon but you yeah. know 99 percent of the like i would say like 95 percent of the time they're right in front of the pedal board just doing this sort of stuff which honestly their stuff is pretty like technical so i would say that that that's warranted but you know at the same time like you know, it'd probably be cool if they, like, moved around a little bit, you know? It would be nice, but, I mean, that's... You, I think it's... You have to take it into consideration, like, the type of band that you're seeing. Like, there aren't going to be bands that... Like, you're going to see bands like Andreas where they're just going to be, like, super fun and they're not going to have, like, any pedals whatsoever. And then you're going to have to see, like, other bands like, you know, Chon or, like, very technical bands like Polyphia or something like that where they're very like I have to stand near my pedal board because I gotta switch off like the different pedals and stuff like that so I think there's good to both but I think like in the case of going to see music like you obviously want to see people like be into it and be like moving and excited about it you know yeah and it's, it's really not like it's really not that easy to do to kind of like really so like, it's great to enjoy your shows and stuff like that but to be like every performer is really different and everybody, like a lot of people, some people don't take that into account sometimes. And like people are just, everyone's different. And some people will jump around and some people will not. And some people will just will feel awkward doing it. So I think people got to take that pinch of salt, really. It's just like, just do whatever you want on stage. Because I think if you get into the point where you're like, oh, at like this song at three minutes in, we're all going to do synchronized jump. <laughs> just, I've always just thought that was just really, really, that kind of stuff is just, it's just tragic. It's, <laughs> it's not fun to watch because it's just like there's always like three dudes jumping and one guy's just like I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be that guy. I don't believe like when you go and see something live. Like I'm not really a big fan of having a schedule to your set and being like this happens at this point and this happens at this point. And I think all you need to play your live show is just to get up and play. I don't really like things like projectors or anything like samples like spoken word bits between and like, there are bands that do that and that's completely cool because i'm not in those bands and um but i think to get up and play live all you need to do is just be a good band really and if you're a good band then your live show would just kind of be good anyway that's true that's, like, like yeah. with andrea his live show does there's no gimmicks he just gets up and plays and it's just really really yep. good yeah that, that is so true yeah like he <laughs> like literally when i saw him he just brought his gear in they literally plugged it in and they did like a check real quick and they just went at it. So I, I do enjoy that. I, I think it's more honest. I think it's like, again, getting back to like the honest approach, I think it's just if you can see a band just honestly go up there and just do their thing, like I think that that's more 
I'm more inclined to like their stuff if they're just like, you know, I only have like one good gu- like one guitar pedal and then like you know nothing else. So, uh, I like that. I like that approach. I like that change. And you know, I I would happen to agree with you is that I also am not a huge fan of the sort of like like scheduled out like we're all gonna jump right like we're all looking at each other like we're all gonna jump at like two and a half minutes you know okay and then we're all gonna do a spin randy over here is gonna do a left spin and joe over here is gonna do a right spin so make sure you got it right you know we have it practiced out so i yeah. i don't like that like if you're if you're generally having a good time like it, it will show like you won't have to do any of that stuff it will just be what you see you know yeah like unless you're like in like beyonce's like group then that's fine that 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 demands that kind of thing yeah again. but like i don't know like i find like none of the like great jazz musicians did that like you would never catch someone like i don't know like miles davis like you 30 were all gonna be like <laughs> backflip or something like that but i guess like they like even jazz but then had some type of dance routine to it like jazz used to be a dance music i suppose but nowadays i think the less gimmicks the better like i'm not a big fan of people like it's completely fine like people use axe effects and all these like midi pedals and all that kind of stuff and while well, you have some guy backstage controlling their pedals and just like it's just so lame and like <laughs> i can't do the tap dance thing because i think the more that can possibly go wrong with like some fancy sequencing thing that will do all my pedals for me because when that goes wrong we're just going to be like oh my pedals don't work we have to stop <laughs> Well, I have such an old school approach to things really I just kind of think when there's less things to worry about and I just have to plug one thing in it's, it's easier like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah awesome my next question Carl I gotta ask this because I'm a huge video game fan so if you could be a video game character who would you be? Ooh, well that's a tough one because I'm a massive fan of video games <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I don't know Probably, it'd have to, maybe someone from Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7 maybe, like probably like the classic Severoth, or maybe like the ninja from Metal Gear, even though he like, Ooh, okay. in a really horrible way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, who would it be? Oh, probably Taskmaster actually. He was in like, he's not like a massive video game character, but he is in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so yeah. Because he can copy anything he sees. But he loses like a part of his memory every time he does. So yeah, probably Taskmaster because then I can just play anything. <laughs> I can do anything then, and then I'll just be like, oh, I can write lyrics now because I've just seen someone else do it. So, yeah, <laughs> Taskmaster because he's just bad at I like the thought process, Carl. That was that was very that was very conniving, but I I like the approach. So, next question: If you could compile a dream tour, who would be on it? It would just be my friends' bands, really. There you go. Is- yeah, it would just be like, it would be Kaploon, it would be Covet, um, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of Covet, because I bet Young was like the first person I interviewed, and now like, whenever she comes to the UK, it's just good to see her really, and she's doing so well for herself, so it's just really cool to see like, it's kind of inspiring, like, if you just, like, work really hard, you can just, like, obviously be successful, so it's always good to watch that. Um, probably... Who else? Exploder. Well, they were called Exploder than you, but Exploder. Um, Courtney's band, uh, Juno. So it'd probably just be all of my friends' bands on one huge tour. So um, there would be like thirty bands. Really. <laughs> it's, <laughs> a fe- it's the Carl. It's the Carl. For, uh, the Carl of Coplunes Festival. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. My next question, Carl. Got asked this one as well. Favorite TV show. Favorite movie. Oh, favorite movie would have to be Howl's Moving Castle because it has the most amazing soundtrack and um, it's probably the most like it's probably the film that I've seen that works best in like unison with um, music because like that film is so vivid in color and so is the music as well and like with music I always try and want to create something that will I ever create something that will be as vis- visually sounding as that so yeah, probably Howl's Moving Castle. What was the first, the other part of the question? Sorry, it was uh, TV. Favorite TV show? Or oh, favorite TV show? Um, it's not so much TV, but it's an anime. It's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oof. Yes. Probably I've watched that seven or eight times and had. It's just amazing, like the animation, the story, the the concept of like equivalent exchange. Like I apply that to everything I do. 
So I'm like, I have to work really hard or I won't get anything back in return. There's no cheating. There's no shortcuts. So yeah, probably yeah, Full Metal Alchemist and How How's Moving Castle. Yeah. I just recently saw uh, How's Moving Castle. Uh, I had somebody that uh, I don't no longer talk to, but uh, she introduced me to. I had you know, obviously heard of Studio Ghibli. I don't think anybody on the face of this earth in our age range has not heard of it. But uh, I've been meaning to get around to it. I watched like Spirited Away, of course, like the classic uh, movie from Studio Ghibli. But I just recently watched Howl's, and I thought it was just kind of like a masterpiece in terms of like, like you were saying, like music. In, intertwined with like video like just cinematography I think it was just kind of like beautifully arranged and just it was thoughtful like it was just the way that the music and just like the like just the whole movie is I think it was very just methodical everything was kind of like in its place and like the the music kind of like just made you feel in a certain mood about something when when things were happening like I don't want to spoil the movie just in case anybody had had not seen it but it's just kind of you know it's like the visual representation of music i felt like just that whole movie was just like the whole music was based around or the whole movie was based around the soundtrack and i just worked out like in just a magnificent way so yeah it's just one of those films you can't watch it and not feel anything and if you don't you're dead inside <laughs> No soul, got no feeling. Like if you watch that film and you don't feel any emotion, like I don't want to know you. Like you can <laughs> my life and never speak to me again. Just that and <laughs> en- that ending, that ending part, like the probably like the last like half an hour of that movie is just like it's so heart wrenching. So I I definitely amongst one of my favorite movies for sure now without a doubt. But uh, next question, Carl. If there was an album that you could only listen to for a month straight, like if you were like stranded on a desert island, what album would it be? Ooh, hard one. Um, oh, would be which one? Of Gavin Castleton's which one? Uh, oh, what was it called? Uh, I don't know, but it's probably it's an album by Go- Oh Home Home Yeah Home by Gavin Castleton. That's one of my favorites. It's just like it's about. And I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think I haven't listened to it in a long time. But um, it's a, I think it's about like um, this couple that fall in love, and then they end up in a zombie apocalypse. And it's uh, it's written really well. It's like it's all like orchestral, and it's like soul and rap and and jazz and all these other types of things, really. So it's just a, a really great album. I could probably listen to that for a solid month, really. Yeah, yeah and re- his and his stuff is great too. Like I feel like he is underrated because obviously he's in your hunter as well um but i feel like his stuff is just kind of like de- isn't talked about as much as deer hunter which is kind of upsetting because it's just as good uh and i was just talking with um a couple months back i was talking with uh rare futures and they did like kind of like a collaboration uh with gavin castleton and they're just like we get to like we worked with him and we're good friends with him as well and like his stuff is just like wildly good so i i feel like i feel like people who are watching this interview if you haven't checked out gavin castleton like it's a priority definitely go give him a listen uh and that's that was a good that was a good recommendation i i definitely enjoyed that one carl but uh lastly of course the whole reason why we're here tell them about your band where they can find you at and uh anything coming up in the next couple months um you can find us on Bandcamp. Um, Co-Plune, it's like K-O with an underscore P-L-U-N-E. We're on Facebook. We currently like um, had like our last singer left to form a new band. Uh, I think they're called Makono now or something like that, which is like a jazz fusion thing that she's doing. Okay. Um, so check them out. And Courtney's band, Juno, which is D-J-U-N-O. But, um, for Co-Plune, we've got, um, because like we had like so much time before like people left and like we've got a new follow-up lineup now. And I've started another band, so my other band, Sunspot, will be releasing, like I sent you, a, like a track today as well. Yes, yeah. So there's that coming out in a couple of months. But complaining, we have roughly, like, we have so much music. We have about, it's about three full lengths worth of material. Oh, wow, okay. Month. So we're kind of just working through the EPs and kind of seeing where we're going. And then, so we have about three albums worth. And then we also have acoustic versions of all of those songs. So that's about 
like three acoustic EPs plus like I'm not too sure. I've like started off like a jazz like rap thing that I've started making like the backings for. And I don't know if I'm going to do it myself or it'll probably just end up being complaining songs. But we have tons of stuff, and it's just kind of we're just kind of waiting to get it all together because we're all really busy. Like I work in a college. I like work with like young disabled adults just like supporting them with their daily needs maths and english and stuff like that and i teach music there and like everyone else in the band is just ridiculously busy like jack works nine to five he works in a towel shop which is uh, completely different to what he studied at uni um and our singer works in she works at acm in guildford and our current drummer works on shift he's like a rigger as well so we all have jobs that take up tons of our time so we're all pretty busy but we have tons of music and it will it will come out we're just trying to like we want to make sure that when we put out this next release that we spend loads of time on it we did the last one ourselves we did it all ourselves pretty much so we want to go into proper studio with like um a real producer and actually like go with it because the thing about recording your own music is you can it can sound brilliant but like it's really stressful and you can never tell if you've got really shit ideas and i think it's better for someone to tell you go that's awful don't <laughs> like this could be so much better and like i've like had the band like not so much under my control but i've done every like mostly most of the writing apart from lyrics and stuff and um i kind of just want someone else to take the the reins of it and kind of reshape it a bit because i think there's a lot of things that could make the next release really important like the next three releases are all concept albums as well oh nice okay i also Uh, feel like when if you go with the producer it's like you want to get that constructive feedback because he doesn't have any sort of I guess bias towards your band and it's yeah. it, he wants to give an honest like representation of like who you are and like what you sound like <laughs> and just like how the music will come out uh in the future so I mean I you know I know how it is that's like why I'll post like some stuff on like my Facebook just because I want people to be like if it's shit like I want people to tell me it's shit just don't be I like don't offend you're not gonna offend me like I would rather have you say like you could try this or you could or you could fix something else or you could whatever like instead of saying like oh dude it sounds great or something like that because like um i I get that same sort of mentality like even like with like interviews and stuff like that i'm like okay like is there anything that like you'd want me to do next time that would like make it better or something like that it's i think it's all about improvement and if you can you know improve the next time and you can do better the next time then that's even better and then you know hopefully the end product will come out to the way you want it to and you know the way you envisioned it because you know like when you start out with a track and that you could you could probably vouch for is that like when you start with it out with an initial idea it by the time it gets to the end of the line like it might be totally different so um definitely i think that you know i i, I like that you're gonna go with probably the producer way of going about it because it just it makes sense like they they do it for a reason and like you know they want to make sure that you get it out the way you want it to and that the way it should sound that would just kind of like be the best for everybody yeah it's like kind of like it's like uh, cedric bixler said like he said like the more selfish they are the better and that kind of works to a certain degree but um it's also like when you make a record like people make all these compromises and stuff like that and it's in a way, it kind of sometimes can really work, but like I was watching an interview with the um, the composer from Lightspeed Champion. I think his name's like Devonte Hines or something like that, and he did say like, I thought this is really clever. He said like um, that the audience aren't as really dumb as people think they are, really, and like you can give them all the sugar and all the and all the stuff that you think they want, but they'll know if your songs are good or not. And like a lot of people will say like when you go to write stuff like, oh, it can't be like this, like, people won't get it, or whatever, like that. And I kind of think sometimes, like, it's always good to try and push the boat out. And I think, like, the producer we're going to go with is, like, going to make us do that, really. So you have to make some type of compromise, but I think it's when you create music, I think you should always just try and get to a point where you're uncomfortable, or you're trying to make new stuff. Because I think it's really easy to play safe. It really, really is, especially nowadays in music. Like, you can just make a simple product, and you can put a song out, and it can be like, oh, people will like it, but, like, in a couple of weeks, it will just be gone and not mean anything. So I think it's really important to try and, like, strive, always strive. So hopefully we'll do that. Please. it's the memorability aspect you know what i mean there are tracks that you're just going to remember just because they have that sort of like that inkling of like oh this is why this makes this track memorable or like something like that i know that's for me like when i go listen to an album i'm like this is 
like this is why i like this album just because there's something that just is attached to it or there's just something like interesting that i wasn't expecting in that sort of song or like album in general um so i you know i i definitely like that and i think that agree, i again agree with what you were saying about the quote of like you know audience members aren't as dumb as they think that they are and i think that that's there's a lot of truth in that because you know they'll tell you if it's shit or not like that's like without a doubt like they'll let you know for sure yeah. but uh definitely go check out carl's stuff i'll link everything in the description cole plune uh and just all of his other all of his other many 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 projects that he's got going on um definitely if you enjoyed this interview please subscribe please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it a lot if you want share it that'd be amazing and uh thank you of course to carl for coming on and uh getting to it's chat a little bit up. it's been awesome it's really cool shouting you it's really easy awesome nice thanks yeah. awesome carl well definitely go check out his stuff like i mentioned and uh, we'll talk with you soon guys peace Okay, thanks. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button, it really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media, that's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces